Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Excellency, we do have a short program. <laughs> that will be driven mainly by uh, your visitors, the team from the National and uh, the Danish National Student Team. The purpose of this uh, engagement this afternoon by uh, our visitors is to pay courtesy to go on your office as Human President of the Republic of Zambia, but also actually to present to you their research findings with regards to access to education, improved, improved quality education, and academic freedom in Zambia. Mm. Excellency, my job is very simple. I will immediately call upon Dr. Stephen Fanyakula to be the one to introduce his team as well as the, the DSF coordinator Aida to also introduce our team and their after excellence. We will be following the program that is laid out for us. Thank you, Excellence. Yourself, gentlemen, you are lead, but you can even change your identity. <laughs> I, I'm Sylvia Lambadachad, because I'm a member of the Patriotic Fund, a member of the Central Committee, and chairperson of Congress, former cabinet minister, former diplomat, former everything. <laughs> yeah, my name is uh, Frank Lamy. I am a member of the Patriotic Fund. Member of the Central Committee, Chairperson in Charge of Industry. I'm also a former member of Parliament for Chief Constituency in the leadership of His Excellency President. I'm Dr. David Shamlende, Secretary of the Chairman. 
it is also the uh, academic freedom that ensures that the scholars, researchers, and educators have the autonomy to pursue knowledge and uh, to express their opinions without the fear of censorship or repercussions. Um, then uh, the objectives of the report were to uh, establish what the status is of academic freedom in uh, Zambia's institutions of higher learning right now, but also give uh, a benchmark. We can use the, the findings as a benchmark to uh, further where most respondents have, asked, uh, have answered that there are still problems. Uh, the ones where there is, uh, where most respondents uh, were more positive in the responses were when it comes to freedom of research and freedom to teach. Yes. I will now uh, hand it over to Asaya, uh, who will go through the uh, challenges regarding. <laughs> I'm here, they'll say, no, no, say is this. <laughs> Emphasize that you are quoting yourself. <laughs> Please proceed. Yes, there's, there's really been public concern as to how uh, business in parliament is being conducted. And we are concerned because most of the challenges we're facing as students have to do with the legal frameworks, the laws and policies that exist. Yeah, which have to do with the Higher Education Act and many other things um, affect, uh, uh, directly affecting the academic freedoms of students. The other challenge that was raised was the issue of cultural dynamics, cultural norms, and societal pressures were also identified by some of the participants, highlighting the need for awareness programs to foster a culture that respects the best perspectives. The other one is uh, institutional autonomy. Uh, Kevin also referred to that one. Concerns about the lack of institutional autonomy were raised by over 60% of respondents. And I'll keep citing practical example. We currently experience another uh, 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 turn of event which again has not served well with us who are advocating for academic freedom and institutional autonomy where the losing candidate of a political party was recently appointed to the vice chancellor of the University of Zambia, which is the highest institution of learning in this country. That again comes down to who's the paymaster. Is this person really pushing uh, the agenda of ensuring that the people of Zambia are educated? or they are appointed uh, politically to serve the interests of a political party. So the politicization of institutions of higher learning or the education sector in general was another challenge that was raised. The other one was the issue of uh, legal protections. Some respondents believed that the existing legal protections were insufficient. The report calls for a comprehensive review of legal safeguards to strengthen the position of academics. We will cite another example here of where a former student who decided to take part into public service rather to save the people of Zambia was arrested by the police for simply uh, for simply uh, or rather for simply being misunderstood to have orchestrated or being a source of uh, uh, causing students to protest which again is provided for even in the student constitution we see this kind of intimidation from those that would want to speak when things are not okay has also been identified as a challenge and increased uh, uh, during this period that the research was uh, conducted. The other one was the issue of limited resources and poor guidance. There are not enough resources, such as funding or materials. With that, it can be difficult for educators and researchers to freely pursue their academic interests and ideas. This hinders their ability to fully explore and express their thoughts and findings, which is essential for academic freedom. I think the issue of finances or funding to education has been something that consistently advocated for as an answer. Even during your leadership, your excellency, we came out and we told the government that there was need for the government to focus, rather to allocate more of the total national budget towards the education sector because we believe that we still believe that it is the responsibility of government to educate its citizens. The other challenge that was identified 
was the issue of gender disparities and societal pressures. The analysis um, of female participation in student affairs reveals notable gender disparities and the impact of societal pressures on female students. It is evident that female students face specific barriers hindering their full engagement in academic freedom. These barriers include cultural norms and gender stereotypes that influence societal expectations, limiting the extent to which female students can exercise their academic freedom. Identifying and addressing these challenges is crucial for creating an inclusive environment that promotes equal participation and freedom for all students irrespective of gender. In terms of the recommendations for excellency, firstly, the researchers did indicate that all stakeholders deemed to have a stake in discourses of academic freedom, such as the media, the students, media and academic staff should enhance their synergies in order to leave no one in the consolidation of academic freedom in institutions of higher in Zambia. This recommendation makes excellency points out to the fact that there's little or no platforms where young people or even academics and the lecturers who have who feel their rights have been infringed can voice out, can speak when intimidated or when they would want to make a decision that better benefits the major stakeholders or the students, but because of that government hand in most public institutions, most people will decide to keep quiet and not be able to speak. The other recommendation is for the government uh, to craft clear-cut legal frameworks that act as blueprints and legal backups in the fight against various violations of academic freedom in institutions of higher learning in Zambia. The violators of academic freedom take gaps in the legislation as scapegoats to defend their heels. The other recommendation is that a strong monitoring and evaluation system will help in tracking the state of our you, you allow me to disturb you? Are you okay? Yes, sir. Okay. When you talk of government hand interfering with academic freedom, are you referring to public institutions or private institutions? And either way, how is this done and how can it be avoided? When I, when I refer or when I read what is in the report that there is a government hand uh, interfering with academic freedom, it comes down to excellency, to the politicization of the education sector. I cited an example of a recent appointment um, of a losing candidate in the parliamentary election who ends up being a vice chancellor at a university. Such cases will directly uh, lead to decisions being made uh, you know, in favor of uh, political parties. That the is others, uh, with regard to public institutions where the government has a say. Yes, this is with, um, this is. Can you, say, can you say the same thing for private institutions? It, it is your excellency mostly um, uh, referring to public institutions. Oh, okay. But you may wish to also note that to a certain extent, government does have a say in what the public institutions have to do. I will give an example of um, certain organizations that are responsible for monitoring the like health professional stands of Zambia, the higher education authority, Zambia qualifications authority, all these are institutions of government which have to uh, uh, have a mandate to monitor all institutions of higher learning, regardless of the private or public. Because either way, everyone who's being trained in these institutions will be employed or will work as a Zambian educated from a university or college work as a Zambian educated from a university or college, not public or private, but we are all being trained to serve the same purpose. What do you recommend could be done to avoid or reduce on that influence, given the examples you've given? So the appointment of people in the academic circles to run public institutions and also to run those institutions which are statutory and oversee or superintend over uh, academic institutions. I think this is, this is an open question. 
Because it's an open question. Give me an open answer. <laughs> because, because you see, this, this forum for me is God sent. <laughs> okay, uh, so uh, maybe to, to, to help uh, communities, I, I think uh, there's, uh, there's one policy that uh, I mean, uh, we've been running with as an ASO, and one of the, uh, when you look at our strategic plan, uh, one of the points there is that we want to depoliticize national violence, and we say that uh, if, uh, if we have to play politics, maybe, maybe, maybe we can play politics, uh, maybe in the Ministry of Defense if we want, or maybe Ministry of Foreign Affairs if we want. But uh, if we play with uh, displayed in institutional violence, uh, and at the end of the day, those who are sent to represent the students do not represent the interests of the students, but they represent the interests of the political parties that supported them or that funded them to occupy those seats. So we feel uh, we need to, 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 to stay away. Uh, completely depoliticize uh, the education sector and let technocrats run this institutional violating and appointment should be based on merit and not necessarily party inclination or maybe uh, those who speak well about those in power at that time. Uh, let me not derail you. Proceed. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, Your Excellency. I think your question is very much important because eventually at the end of this engagement, we want to map out uh, interventions, what can we do to stop this issue of lack of autonomy for institutions. So you place that as more homely as well to try interventions. Um, that can be made to resolve the challenge that has been faced. The other key recommendation is the issue of uh, sustaining the engagement of students in discourses of academic freedom and ensuring that the students and their respective students' unions are empowered in this direction. There have been isolated inc incidences of students in higher policy dialogues discussing the trajectory of academic freedom in Zambia and students are informed of the minutes later. And again, on this one, this one is very crucial for us because we are student unions and our main business is to be bridge between management and the students. That is at local constitutional level. For us as an assault, ourselves and the government to be able to uh, bring out the issues that are key. And we have been operating with the, with the theme that nothing for us without us. We don't believe that people can sit and discuss the plight of students, the well-being of students, when we the students ourselves are not there. And if we look at what is happening today, and this has come out as a key recommendation, there's been little or no platforms or engagements where the student unions have been put together to push an agenda that is relevant to the well-being of the, of, 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 uh, uh, of the students' uh, welfare. And you may also wish to recall your excellency, and I'll say this in front of you, that most of the people that voted for the current government were young people. We saw students lining up in graduation gowns to vote for the current government. And the expectation now is that there should be more platforms where young people should go to speak, where young people should feel the decision they made was not uh, a wasteful one, but was one that has yielded a result, and that result is that they are sitting on a round table like this to discuss what amount should be added on the student meal allowance. Hmm. Can students buy mini meal at a cheaper price? We want those conversations to be there on a round table. And this is why this is a key recommendation, which we are even submitting to government, because we have a government in place, and we want these things to be clear, clearly indicated to the government. We saw so many platforms under your leadership. You are not perfect. We were able to engage with the minister and many other platforms. Practically speaking, Zanasu was given a slot in the Zambia Qualifications Authority, uh, uh, Qualifications Authority uh, uh, board to sit there, and the letter is there. We were invited to nominate one person, but I can have a different conversation with the Minister of Education there. But this platform was there, given there. And we want this to trickle down to institutions. The Senate, which is provided for in the Higher Education Act, there is a council, there are board meetings at schools. We want to have a seat in those important meetings. Nothing for us without us. The other recommendation that came out was the adoption of a multi-stakeholder approach in the 
fight against various aspects of violations with respect to academic freedom. Um, academic freedom is crucial in a bid to uphold the rule of law. If the consolidation of academic freedom in institutions of higher learning in Zambia is to be viable, legitimate, and relevant, the process of accelerating the implementation of different activities related to the advancement of academic freedom will need to engage as broad, of, as broad a set of stakeholders as possible. Last but not the least, Your Excellency, the government and institutions of higher learning should create a conducive and supportive environment with all necessary conditions such as institutional autonomy, self-governance, and academic tenure to anchor the implementation of various activities of various activities meant to accelerate the consolidation of academic freedom in Zambia. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jesse. Uh, thank you so much, Your Excellency. I think uh, the report is, uh, is quite huge, but I think we picked on uh, things that we feel are uh, relevant uh, for now. And I think for now, uh, we would, uh, want to get your feedback and also uh, what you feel uh, we can do in, in regards to the issues that are uh, that raised. So, thank you so much. Well, I, I, I think uh, yeah, it's a contradiction. Uh, is quite huge, but I think we picked on uh, things that we feel are uh, uh, relevant uh, for now. And I think for now, uh, we would uh, want to get your feedback and also uh, what you feel uh, we can do in, in regards to the issues that are uh, that raised. So, thank you so much. Well, I, I, I think uh, yeah, it's a contradiction and a bit of a paradox that uh, you want to depoliticize institutions of learning on one hand and you want to engage politicians, especially those who are in power, to influence change in how education is delivered in our institutions. Don't you think that's a bit of a paradox? Because I see a situation where you want more and more uh, rapport or engagement with the state, especially, not the opposition where we are now, but where we were previously, where our friends are now. And that is what you'd like to be enhanced. So if we're going to let you go free, and as government or opposition, we say, no, leave them away from politics, how then do we engage? So I think this is the difficulty uh, you may find yourselves in, and this is the difficulty probably the colleagues who are running government are finding themselves in. Because one minute you'll be saying, no, the cost of living is too high. That is a political statement. And the one who can tell whether the cost of living is too high is a student, because he's coming from a home, he's coming from the community. He knows the cost of living because he feels it. So if you do that, to me, who is sitting in the state house, to me, who is the opposition as president, I see that's a political statement. And if anyone helps everybody, to me, it is to my cause, I will encourage you. <laughs> so if I see it as smacking of animosity and desirous of bringing me down, I'll say, he's being too political, can you deal with him? So, so you see what I'm talking about. This is the biggest challenge you face as students, including uh, when you talk about freedoms. Yes, you are free. They'll give you freedom, and I think I'm an advocate for freedom. But at the end of the day, you find that uh, when you freely speak on politics and you support me, I'll say, no, you're not being political. But when you freely speak on politics and you injure my status or my situation or my vision or my ambition, I say, no, that's being too political. You're not supposed to be political. It becomes a problem. But your findings are genuine, legitimate, and I can only say that let's find a way of airing them so that we all get to know. And I'm surprised that uh, you are craving for student participation in decision making at the level of the institution. I've heard of schools here in Zambia where they'll pick a student, a learner, from grade four, grade five, grade six classes and say, you sit with the teachers and you listen to them and they make certain decisions so that you're able to tell them what they're thinking of your class. They call them counselors or senators and some schools and so on. It's happening. And those of you who go to these schools which I may call elitists, that was very common. But I don't know whether it's happening and she should go primary school in Chimum. <laughs> but these, these, these are things which we should be innovative on and be creative and be, be ready to say, look, this is a novel situation. It has never happened. And like you have said in your slogan, nothing about us without us is true. Because you'll be able to know Mila Lawan says, oh, Mila Lawan says, you've proclaimed that you have increased Mila Lawan. But it's not enough. 
Then they will tell you, no, your source is not enough. Where well, your sources are coming from, your source envelope. How do we begin increasing your uh, budgetary requirements for mineral allowance at the same time when the envelope is depleting? Then you will point out that why don't you cut down on your trips, sir? <laughs> that, that kind of thing, because that's what comes out of dialogue. So, so I think that I uh, don't want to 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 to, to take the the positives out of this. Uh, from what you have said, there's a lot of positivity and I can only pray that those in power now want to listen to you because without your support, nothing will work. Just the other day I said something about free education. I'm a product of free education myself and free education meant I used to get books from school. Uh, yeah, I used to, to get even, even meals. We used to get meals given to us. Uh, milk and some, some, some biscuits started at break and so on. That is true, but the resources may not be there. The question is, if the resources are not there for the government, the government should be revisiting uh, its budgetary allocation and say which are the priority areas. And for me, education should be a bigger chunk of the budget. And the, of course, there are competing needs, uh, the security, the health, there is all these things coming through. But unless we begin engaging students, we will have a difficulty because we think students are unruly, they, they, they are being influenced by the political forces, they are against us and so on. But I would like to just speak one, one little thing. In the last two and a half years that I've been out of office, uh, there has been what has been introduced as free education in Zambia. And just the other day I said I'm bemoaning the quality of free education. Because I saw little children clustered in a room like sardines and so on. That came after I spoke, but uh, my worry is the quality of free education. If you think about it, the quality of education from grade 1 to grade 7, grade 7 to grade 3, 12, and in these social institutions, did you address that? Are you happy with the quality of education encountered in lower level, grade 1 to 7, grade 7 to 12, grade beyond that? Yeah, did you focus on that? If you didn't, please focus on that and help me advocate for quality education. Because that is what I was calling for. I was not saying that they scrap free education. And then, then, you know, when I talk about quality education, it can be diverged with the, those who train the media, with the practitioners. Because the media practitioner is supposed to be learning for truth all the time. Somebody says, oh, look, if we reform government in coming years, we will revisit or review quality education, the quality of education that's coming under the name free education. That's what I said. But uh, a journalist says, uh, President Lungu says this, and says, let's have a talk show. Two hours they're talking. And no one is challenging them to say, where did he say this? In what context did he say this? Can I have a, 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 a voice bite or whatever you call it? or a video clip to show that the man said, I'll do away with free education. So I began at that point questioning the quality of education in the media fraternity, those who train journalists. Are you sure this is the quality of education a journalist would say, I'm happy with it? Yeah. If I was a journalist, the first thing I would say was, wait a minute, wait a minute. Did that man say that? Where did he say that? Was there any media professional present? Give me a footage. Uh, give me a recording and so on. And then we'd go through it and then I'll say, yeah, I think by implication he said this. So then let's take him on. Or if you're not clear, you say, President Lungu, or they want to call me former president. Former President Lungu, what was president, was president, no worry. So, <laughs> so they would say, President Lungu, what did you mean when you said this? Isn't that elaborate? And when I make myself clear, then you would say, this is what the gentleman said. Let's talk about it. And then you can begin now tearing me apart and the heading, head, headlines and so on and so forth. But the quality of education, of course, does not end up with the journalists. It ends up with lawyers, it ends up with doctors, it ends up with the engineers. Why do we have washed out bridges every so often? It's because of the quality of education we're offering in the engineering sector. And if we offer quality education in that area, who we'll have people of integrity who will be able to do professional work which will last, which will save people money. And uh, so for your research, I think that you should have gone a bit further, or I hope you did go further, to look at the quality of education in instances which can be categorized as professionals, uh, lawyers. Are they getting good education? Are we getting good lawyers? Quality education. Uh, if they're paying fees, are uh, the fees worth it? If it's free education, does it mean we should just sacrifice and say it's free education, therefore we should bring out uh, if I go to a university which is privately funded, 
the quality of education. We'll be rebuilding the workmanship, the skills that I'll have. It is goes the same if I go to a public institution and I bring out uh, uh, I don't know I don't know what word to use, I bring out an wholesome performance. People will say, I'd rather have graduates from this institution working for me and graduates from that institution. You begin now uh, bringing down the quality of education, you begin now despising that institution, and you begin saying, I'd rather send my child to a public school or a private school because what I'm seeing is worth it and so on. So in a research like this, I think, he, he, I know that you haven't had time to go into detail to give me what your findings are, but I thought I should take advantage of this opportunity to just clarify that quality education should be quality education. If it's free, the government should spend more on free education that people are able to equal the expectations of the syllabus and at the end of the day produce quality citizens who will be able to deliver as a medical doctor, it's a medical doctor for whether you're coming from uh, Lady Manawasa, you're coming from any other medical institution in the country. If you're a lawyer, you're going to produce quality legal services, whether you're coming from a private university or a public university and so on. So all I say, I can say is the, thank you very much for this and I don't want to take out, if the problem is if I talk, no matter what you say, <laughs> they will trash everything and say, Edgar Lungo said this. But I hope that the media will pick what you said. Because what you said is very important. It is what has provoked me to say what I've said. So if only we can listen to you, because we cannot govern and run schools and universities without you successfully, probably can do better. So media guys, please ensure that you give a headline to these people, not Lungo again, Lungo again. <laughs> okay. So thank you so much. And that's the addition you wish to make. What we did for ourselves, you have been able to evaluate. I know that we were there up to 2021. Our friends have been there from 2021 to now. And you should be able to compare and contrast. And it's so contrasting, you'll be able to help those who are in power, what they can do better. Without even necessarily having to beat our drum and say, oh, guys, the previous guys did better, because that is what they don't want to hear. <laughs> they don't want to hear that. So. You wish to say something? A lot of thanks. <laughs> yeah. okay. Unless you have to say, you have to say, the report must be very lengthy. I would like to have a copy. Can you help me get a copy of the full report once it is released and so on? It will help us. But the quality education should be quality education, right? And then students should participate. I agree with you. But whether that should be legislated, I don't know. Whether that should be just a custom in the institution we belong to. Some universities do it out of custom. Some schools do it out of goodwill for the parents have insisted, but others probably have it in the regulations. Dean of students and all these things begin mingling and then you have quality senates and so on. So, thank you so much. Are you, are you done? Yes, sir. <laughs> huh? it's, a, it's, a, it's a huge... It's a huge thing, yeah? But when are, when are, when are you launching it so that uh, the public can have uh, access to it and probably judge, themse judge for themselves? I think as soon as we are done, we would like to hear a comprehensive statement for this engagement. Right. Oh, okay, so from here you're going, I know you're coming from Livingstone and you're still on, on it. So from here where are you going? Uh, I think we are, we are done with our outreach. So okay. we did uh, institutions of higher learning in Osaka, we visited them and also we shared the, uh, the same report and also got the recommendations and mm -hmm. to Livingstone okay. uh, to get the yeah, in Central Province as well, and mm -hmm. Central Province was the last one. Mm -hmm. uh, our, our comrades and colleagues will be going back to Denmark on, uh, on Sunday. Uh, so tomorrow we are just dedicating it to also see uh, the beautiful city of Osaka okay. and also get one or two souvenirs like mm -hmm. they did on the uh, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, so basically uh, that's it. The next step maybe in regards to this is that we want to produce what we are calling a toolkit. Okay. So that toolkit will be used as a basis ah, for okay. advocacy okay. Uh, based on the issue that uh, came out uh, uh, on the report, but I should also make mention that uh, I think uh, we, we appreciate uh, your, your recommendations. Uh, I think maybe our, 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 our research focused on another part, but also the research findings have exposed maybe some of the issues that you've raised mm -hmm. and things that maybe uh, we, we are not a part of uh, our objective. Uh, okay. we, we, yeah. uh, started to pursue uh, the, the research, but I think uh, uh, we, we, we 
are very ambitious young people and seem to read that at least uh, while we still can uh, leave uh, something that at least young people would not be doing after we leave uh, uh, maybe the office that we are in, they should have a different um, uh, agenda that should be pushing for. We can't keep on pushing about uh, uh, academic freedom. I think maybe one step at a time. So now, okay, when once we have, because well, academic freedom also, like you said, uh, is broad and also part of the definition says that access to education, not just access to education, but access quality, to quality education. education. Yes. So all that uh, is uh, uh, incapacitated uh, uh, to the issue of uh, academic freedom. Mm -hmm. Um, I think uh, my team uh, and everyone here would like to, to appreciate mm. that uh, you gave us uh, time mm. uh, from your very, very busy schedule to, to, to engage with us. I think to us it shows uh, the heart that you have for young Thank people, you so also accommodating our young people mm. engaging in this conversation that does not only uh, uh, shape uh, the, 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 the face uh, of, of Zambia but also the shape of the academic in Zambia and also the path uh, mm. that we want to be. So, um, before we meet, uh, we brought you a, a small... So I just wanted to find out from the SG. SG, uh, middle allowances, you talk about an increase of two quarts or something. Uh, but if you bothered about feeding programs for young ones in these uh, schools, uh, we used to provide the food. Uh, to feeding programs and feeding programs because you can have all the freedom but if I'm hungry my belly is stinging I can't, I can't hear anything I can't learn anything so as much as the students at high, in high institutions are learning of learning are clamoring for increased allowances for meals we should also look at the meal plan feeding programs for schools where applicable we used to do that and I don't know whether it's being done but it's helpful because when I'm full I will sit there I will listen and I can also sing and jump or even to kindergarten. So that costs money. And then it takes us back to the budget. How are we budgeting? Are we giving priorities to travels? Are we giving priorities to children? And so, on? so your research is okay. It's started well, but I'm sure other researchers will come and build upon it. But if you can raise these questions, you know, they're not rhetorical questions. They're questions which are fundamental. Because once you say we did not tackle this because we, we didn't have space. Another researcher will come and pick it up from there and say, look, this is what should be done and so on. So all said and done. Thank you so much for coming, for the patience, and God bless you. I just wish you the very best. I'm tempted to comment on the Oh yeah, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> speaking the same language but the same message but very different language of regions we have been advocates for uh, so much more than just freedom as access to education or that as an asset. We also uh, proposed something similar to what you have suggested in terms of feeding. And that is some sort of a culture we learned from the education program we had with the Danes, where as a student, if I'm boarding a bus in Denmark, just using my card, my university card, and I get a certain discount. So those are sort of incentives which government can, and if the government that is prioritizes education they really want to support education directly or indirect can put up those incentives mm -hmm. the price of living the price of getting a laptop anything i want to use that is um, going to contribute to my education of course not alcohol or things like that <laughs> <laughs> buying a laptop buying books buying food i should be able to walk into a shop at this part and say i'm a student at the university of zambia can i buy this and i'll be given that discount those are practical things mm -hmm. to point, looking at the growth in the population now and what can be possible mm -hmm. but of course uh, we still feel there's a need for mindset change even those that are in government in terms of how they look at certain sectors of mm -hmm. the country right. No, we can go on and on and on. Well, this subject affects all of us, and especially those of us who want to read a good legacy. We say, but we can do better. Yeah, we can do better. How else shall we be remembered apart from our deeds? So, because the words have proven that they're just words. But when you do it, you say that this, he did what he meant. He said what he said, and he did it, and so on. So keep on, ladies and gentlemen. It's a noble cause. Mm -hmm. Of course, we will not appreciate you now, but when you go say, there is a research report, there are findings, there are one look at it, and so on. But I believe that the government 
the government in place now, the government in situ now, you know, listen to you and the, look at your findings and so on. But that's what governments do. Thank you so much. This is DJ Mutati exclusive. Alright, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you, peace. I gotta go.